Hi, in this video we are going to uh, replace the automatic transmission fluid, the Matic S, in a 2005 Nissan Frontier LE crew cab. It's going to be the same for your Frontier minus this right here. So the older Nissans had a dipstick. It was kind of hidden. Um, you thought it was just a cap under your hood, but if you loosen that 10 millimeter bolt and take it out and then pull that cap, um, you'll see that your automatic transmission um, dipstick is in there. If you don't have this or you can't find this in your engine bay, look up under your truck uh, or your Nissan car. If you, on your uh, automatic transmission pan if it looks like you have two drain plugs one like the one I'm loosening and then one towards the front of the vehicle uh, then the one at the front of the vehicle is going to be where you check your fluid level and that is a whole different video um, I do have one out there uh, it's under 370z and that'll give you some tips on uh, doing the automatic transmission fluid on a Nissan 370Z or uh, any other modern uh, Nissan automatic transmissions. Uh, this one, this video is going to be more for like the 350Z, the Nissan Titan, and the Nissan Frontier. Um, the Frontier from probably around 2000 to about 2014 or 2015. I think they change it the transmission pan. Um, the Nissan Titan, I'm not sure when they changed their transmission pan on those. Uh, I know that my Nissan Titan had this same transmission in it. Uh, in my 370Z and my uh, Infiniti G35 all had this same transmission in it. So it's a good transmission. It's easy to work on. Parts are readily available. Uh, good transmission. So here's a little tip if you're watching this and you're working on a Frontier. I'm using a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench, box wrench right now. There is one 10 millimeter that is difficult to get to. So you're going to use a combination wrench to loosen and tighten this one uh, 10 millimeter screw. Be careful when you're tightening this down. Uh, you can't get a torque wrench in there. So don't over tighten it. Another trick is uh, uh, use a rubber gasket uh, on the on the on the automatic transmission pan. Later on in this video, I will show you that the last time this was done, whoever did it, uh, they used. I guess I guess it was an okay kit, right? Um, it's really the filter you need to worry about. The gasket isn't that important. This truck did sit for about six years before I started laying my hands on it a couple days ago. And um, so there was some automatic transmission fluid leaking at the front of the transmission up by the engine. So to make life a little bit easier, I am going to use an an air ratchet to remove the rest of these screws. It makes the job go by a lot quicker. Well, what I'm doing is I'm going to go around the pan and I'm going to loosen all the screws first. Taking a few out here and there just to make life a little bit less miserable. Removing and installing all of these screws is maybe the worst part of the job other than having automatic transmission fluid dripping on you. I don't know when the automatic transmission fluid on this particular truck was changed last. It came into my possession with 100, uh, I'm sorry, 200 and some thousand miles on it. So that's 210,000 miles on this truck right now. And again, it's been sitting for six years. So I'm just giving it just a little tiny bit of love. I'm going to use this truck um, more or less just to get from 
my current house to the new house which I'm building. Um, I have a brand new Nissan Titan and that's kind of my wife's truck and any of you that have a wife you understand that they don't really like it when you get their vehicle dirty. So instead of me using a four wheel drive Nissan Titan Pro 4X to get up and down the mountain where our new house is going. Um, she said no. I've been running back and forth on my ATV, but I can't hold a lot on my ATV. So I decided, why don't I just get a little side-by-side, uh, -side, a 4x4 side-by-side. -side. Well, those are really expensive. You're looking at 10 grand for a side-by-side -side that somebody completely abused. So I decided to get a Nissan Titan, or I mean, a this Nissan Frontier instead. And I think this is going to be a nice little vehicle when I'm done with it. So these front screws, I'm going to remove them. I'm going to leave one at the very front. And I'll show you why in just a second. That's, that's why I didn't cut out me removing all these screws. Because um, there is a trick to removing this pan. And what you're going to do is um, remove all the, pan, all the screws on the side. And the ones at the rear, there's going to be two, one or two left in the rear that you're going to leave up in there. And then you're going to remove the front one screw last. That one that's up there. Now you're going to remove that one last. And then go to the back of the pan and remove the two that are holding up the back of the pan while you kind of balance it. Because believe it or not, even though you drain the fluid out of this pan, there's still about a quart of fluid resting in the bottom of this pan. And I just want to save you a little bit of trouble of having to clean up your garage floor and just show you a trick of how I do it to get the pan uh, to kind of come off and uh, not dump that quart of fluid all over my garage floor. So here we go, I'm ready to take out that front screw right now. I've moved my oil catch pan into place. And there you see my pan's loose right now. There's two screws in the back holding it on. So be careful with this. Um, you can let it hang a little bit. I would say keep your hand in place and keep the pan on the transmission until you're ready to drop it down into your oil catch can. All right, so all our screws are out. Now, just gently lower this down and those, those frame parts kind of get in the way. It's, it's a little bit worse on a 370Z. Um, the Nissan Frontier is, is kind of a pleasure to work on because you can really get to everything underneath the Titan or underneath the Frontier and the Titan as well. The Titan's a really easy truck to uh, work on. So I've gotten the fluid out of my pan. I'm going to throw my pan out on the floor so I can work on it in just a second. And then some of the little drips, we're going to come back and we're going to wipe those drips off the transmission. But we're going to let this filter kind of drain. Um, it, it just makes less of a mess if... Uh, there's not drips of automatic transmission fluid all over the bottom side of your truck. So I usually get all like the nuts and the, the bolts that are hanging through. So here we are on the pan. So even if your transmission was flushed, that's awesome. It's, it's good to have new, fresh, ATF uh, Matic S in your transmission uh, but it's very important that this pan gets dropped uh, I like doing my automatic transmissions every 30,000 miles uh, some people might think that's overkill
but your transmission shifts so much better when you have fresh fluid. So this is one of the magnets. There's two in the pan. So I just pop that magnet off the pan and I'm wiping all the little metal dust and debris that accumulates on that magnet. I'm just going to wipe that off the magnet and then I'll set that magnet off to the side. And the, the one nice thing about replacing your filter instead of just taking it to the dealership or taking it somewhere and having them do an automatic transmission fluid flush is you actually get all this gunk off the bottom of your pan. The bottom of your your automatic transmission gets so nasty. There is so much dirt and debris and sediment that accumulates in the bottom of this pan. Uh, those magnets do a great job of helping to you know, make all that metal dust stick to the bottom of the pan. Um, but I would like to think that my Nissan appreciates it when I get all this crap out of it. So here's the second magnet. I just pulled it off the pan and I'm wiping off all the nasty fluid and the little metal shaving dust junk that's in the bottom of the pan. Again, this this fluid looked pretty good. The pan looks actually pretty good for 210,000 miles. This truck drives amazing for 210,000 miles, even considering that the tires are just just worn out, just completely worn out. So the, as you see, the wheels are off. I've already got the tires off of off of the wheels and I'm waiting for discount tire to deliver my new tires so I can install them. So here's our magnet back on the pan. That's the first magnet. Now we're going to put the second magnet, just wiping it down one last time. There's the second magnet in the pan. And now this gasket's got to come off the pan. So here's my uh, kit, my original kit. I had this on the shelf. It's been on my shelf in my garage for a few years. I don't know. I got rid of my Nissan, my 2004 Nissan Titan LE maybe two years ago. Um, so this, I bought a couple kits for it because I was going to keep it forever. But if you look at this gasket I'm pulling off somebody went cheap so that's just a paper gasket so if, if you're buying a ATF kit and it comes with a paper gasket don't use a paper gasket get a decent rubber one if your kit came with a with a paper gasket you know run back to the auto parts store pay another 10 bucks get yourself a rubber gasket the rubber seals a lot better than the paper does and I told you earlier in the video that the front of this pan um, did have a leak there was automatic transmission fluid seeping at the front of the pan it was discolored so here is my new pan gasket and as you see it is rubber and there is a trick to getting these gaskets on so you're gonna love this um, if you learn anything from me from watching this video, this is going to be it. Um, put your gasket on the pan before you climb up under your truck. So with the rubber gasket, when you put your screw in through the pan and through the rubber gasket, that rubber gasket will hold that screw in place. I can't tell you any easier way to line this gasket material up with all the holes and line it up with uh, the transmission. This is the absolute easiest way. Don't just do a few of the screws. Do each and every screw. Push each and every screw through this gasket so they're sticking out the other side. Then when you climb back under your truck, all you have to do is put this pan on your transmission and start tightening down these screws. It is absolutely painful if you try to put this pan on without the screws. If you try to 
line it up and do one screw at a time while you're upside down underneath your truck with your arms up in the air going numb. Uh, this is the best way. You don't want to use you know, silicone, black RVT. You don't want to use any of that on your transmission filter or in your transmission gasket. This is the correct way to do it. This is the easiest way to do it. Um, I hope you heed my warning and you're sitting there watching this video on your phone right now as you're putting screws into your own pan. This, this, is, this is the best tip I can give you. This is might be the only tip I give you in this video, but this is it. So all right, we're good to go. We got all our screws in place. Those corners are tricky. Um, on the corners, those screws go into the inside hole, not the outside hole. The outside hole is uh, to line up the pan when you're underneath the vehicle. So any, um, any excess fluid, anything that's on that gasket, I went ahead and wiped that off. Now my pan is ready to install on the truck. So here's the kit that I personally use. This is about a $20 kit. You see it says Titan. But again, I had a shelf full of these because I've had, this is my fifth Nissan Frontier. I'm on my second Nissan Titan. And I've had about 13 Z cars. So I'm pretty familiar with Nissans. So now I'm going to take off the uh, filter. There's three bolts that hang down, and uh, then the rest are screws for 16 total. So there's like three nuts that you have to worry about. There's three very long screws you need to worry about. I don't know, there's a dozen, less than a dozen long screws that are shorter than the longest screws and then there are like three sh very short screws that hold this filter on. But you'll figure it out. There's no way you can put the screws in the wrong hole. It doesn't seem like the automatic transmission fluid ever stops dripping. When I had my Corvette C7, I used to change the automatic transmission fluid 
every 10,000 miles because it seemed like every other month GM was coming out with the new formula of the automatic transmission fluid to try to get rid of the shake. Um, I don't think they ever mastered it. And that's the reason why I'm driving the 370Z again instead of a Corvette. After after owning a Corvette C7, and it's the oldest Stingray, I guess, not only a C8, but after owning a, a Stingray, a C7 Stingray, once I traded it in, I said I'm never buying another GM vehicle. So if there's anybody from GM watching this video, you lost me as a customer. All the Corvettes I've owned in the past, I will never own another GM product. So you successfully ran me off. That and your customer service in my area sucks. and now you know why it's just so much easier and much more affordable to do all this work yourself instead of going to the dealership sitting in the showroom for a couple hours while they wrench on your vehicle I would rather do this myself get a little bit of satisfaction out of it All right, with that old filter out of the way, now it's time to install our new one. Be very careful with those two wires at the front of the transmission. You do not want to pinch those. So you need to line this filter up with those two screws that are hanging down out of the transmission. I hope it's not like mine on your transmission. Um, my screws are kind of loose. It almost makes me think that uh, whoever took this off last time um, might have over torqued those little screws, might have over torqued them, and uh, now they spin freely in the transmission, which is a shame. Um, but again, this, this truck has 210,000 miles. Um, no telling who the next owner of this truck's going to be. I'm, I'm going to drive it until I get tired of it, until I don't have a use for it anymore. And I'm going to pass it on to somebody. And I doubt they're going to maintain it the way I would maintain it. Uh, I, I strongly don't see myself changing the automatic transmission fluid in this truck ever again. If I can if I can find one of these that's affordable with low mileage in a uh, Pro 4X, I, I may buy one of those in the future, but as for this truck, I just need it for a utility vehicle and then I'm going to turn around and flip it and see if I can get my money back. As, as we're sitting here watching this video today, I am currently uh, $6,000 is, is what this truck owes me. So that's what the cost of the truck. I bought uh, those BF Goodrich all-terrain tires. Um, so that set me back a thousand bucks. Hopefully those will be here by this week in a couple days. Um, I've got the PCV valve coming because this doesn't have uh, or this yeah this has a low low oil pressure the low the oil pressure is not working and it blows smoke really bad when I start it up I'm pretty sure the PCV valve is clogged up um, so I've got one of those coming I have a new um, oil pressure sensor coming that should fix my oil gauge on the dash. I had some um, another, some other um, emissions vacuum switches coming. 
I've already done the air filter. I've already done the oil. The oil looked good. My oil pickup was clean. I'm pretty sure my oil pump is working fine because when I bought this, I did drive this truck 100 miles to get it back to North Carolina where I'm at. I've swapped the fluid in the differential. I've flushed all the old dot three out of the system and put new dot three in. That's going to be another video that I'm going to do for you guys. I've got brake rotors coming. I've got brake pads coming. I really would like to put the Bilstein suspension on this. Um, that would be kind of cool if I could pull that off. All right, so we've got uh, all our screws back in place. Um, we've got them just about hand tight. Like I said, those nuts are kind of tricky there. Um, oh no! They uh, they kind of want to spin freely on their own, and they are not supposed to do that. They're supposed to be locked into the transmission. So again, be very careful. Do not pinch those wires. Do not pinch those wires. We got them finger tight. I'm gonna wipe the drips off one more time. And now we're gonna hit it with the torque wrench. I'm not giving you torque specs in my video, so don't ask. It's not going to happen. You need to go out to the interwebs and get your own torque specs for this. A um, little bit more research for you to do. I don't give torque specs because there's too many trolls out on the interwebs who would flame me because I gave you you know the wrong torque specs I'm working on a 2005 Nissan Frontier and maybe your 2021 Nissan Frontier has different torque specs so it's just easier if I don't give you any torque specs at all and you look it up for your model year of your truck and we're all happy Make sure when you're doing these that you're using an inch-pound torque wrench. Don't use a foot-pound torque wrench and convert it to inches. You will break off bolts. So here's our beautiful pan. This means the video is getting close to over. I've been trying to shorten up um, putting the screws back in. I took so long removing the screws that this video just went longer than it needed to be. This is a job you can probably do start to finish um, I would say in about an hour uh, if you have your truck up in the air. If you're going to do a few things underneath your truck that would be a good time to do this job because um, it takes it takes a little bit of time right to get your truck up in the air, get all four wheels off the ground get the truck level high enough up that you can work underneath it comfortably.
But what I'm doing is I'm just going around this whole pan and I'm just getting everything um, just hand tight. Now I've got my ratchet out and I'm snugging everything up. Now that we're done with the ratchet, we're going to hit it with our torque wrench. Again, I'm not giving you any torque information. You need to Google that yourself. Find your service manual for your model year of your Nissan Frontier, Titan, 350Z, whatever it is you're working on, Infinity. So once I've got the pan back on, it's time to see how much fluid came out of our car. So I didn't spill hardly any at all. Usually with a Nissan, I would expect to see six quarts. I did not check the fluid level before I started. I did When I bought the vehicle, I did not check the fluid level. I took it for a test drove, I looked at all the tires, I saw that they were rotten, I saw how much oil was blowing out the back, I paid the guy, I got in the truck and I drove home. So I've emptied out my catch can and it looks like I'm right at about four and a half quarts. So I'm using a mobile one jug and just guessing off the side, I'm at four and a half quarts if you look at the side of the jug I would have wanted to see a little bit more transmission fluid come out than that but that's okay four and a half I'm gonna fill it back up with four and a half and then once I have the truck all back together and I can go out and take it for a test drive I'll do that and then uh, that'll allow the fluid to circulate within that transmission and then I can check it again after my test ride and I can top it off. So there you go. You just count up the side of the jug. There's lines. So we're four and a half quarts. And now we've removed our dipstick from the engine. And with the dipstick out, we're going to drop a funnel down in there. So if you're wondering where I got this little funnel, um, this funnel is more or less um, for like motocross, motorcycles. Uh, it allows you to get into tight areas and fill the oil like what's on a, a motorcycle. So it works out pretty good. So on your dipstick, it actually tells you only use Nissan Matic J. Well, Matic J was discontinued more than 10 years ago. More than 10 years ago. So it was superseded by Nissan Matic S. So here's your Nissan Matic S. This is what I'm telling you to put into your vehicle. I'm not going to tell you torque specs, but I am going to tell you that if you went through and you did this job, you need to be putting Nissan Matic S back into your transmission. Don't go cheap. Don't be running out to Walmart or wherever you buy oils from and buy something that says it works in Nissans. Nissan fluid is made for Nissan.
cars uh, is very important. If you want your transmission to function and shift properly, you know, buy buy the Nissan fluids. And these uh, these quarts of Matic S, I usually pay about ten dollars a quart. So, yeah, it, it's it's good fluid. If you have a good reputation, um, good rapport with your Nissan dealer, and you go in there and show them how much you can buy the fluid for online, typically your parts guy is going to uh, match that online price. I know my parts guy will. Um, if he won't match the price, then I just go home and order it online. Simple as that. It's not rocket science. Um, it's just very important that you use uh, the Nissan fluid. So this is about the end of this video. Uh, I hope it was helpful for you. If you appreciate what I've done, hit the subscribe button. Give me a like. Um, I can use the little bit of money that I get from YouTube. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please watch some of my other videos. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one.